Hey there, Ryan Kingsline here. Now, have you ever wanted to know how to render amazing characters inside of Blender? That's what this video is going to be all about. This is part three of a three part series where Evan Ginsiak and I are going to walk you through the creation of a setup for a character inside of Blender. Check it out. First, import your model. Make sure to turn smooth shade on and then set up your texture network. And if this is new to you, then make sure to check the end credits for our texturing video. We'll place it there once we're done with all of that good stuff. In this video, we're gonna look at the rendering setup that helps sell all of this beautiful texturing. So let's get started. The setup starts with a texture coordinate node that goes into a mapping node and then into an environment texture node where the HDRI image is stored. The color of that then goes out into a background node, which then connects to the world output. All right, now if this is new to you, let me walk you through the basic setup. So make sure over here in the property section on the right, go into the icon that looks like the back of a camera and set the render engine to cycles. Then scroll down to this part that says film and turn on transparent so that the HDRI is not showing up in the background. Then we're going to open up two viewports by going into the top corner right here, this little empty space, and we're just going to kind of drag to the left. And then within the second panel, we're going to go up into this little icon right here in the upper left-hand side, the editor type. And we're going to set that to the shader editor. Then in the left window, we're going to go up into the viewport shading selection where we can choose wide wireframe, a couple of different options, and we're going to choose this last one, the render preview. Then back into our shader editor over here on the right, we're going to go up to where it says object and change that to world so that we can actually adjust the shader network for the world settings, the lighting, and all of that. I'm going to start by pressing tab and typing in texture coordinate to create that node. Press tab again, and I'm going to bring in a mapping node. Hit enter, and then tab again, and texture or environment texture node, and there you go. We've already got, as part of this conversation, a background and a world output. So then within the environment texture node, we're gonna choose open and bring in our HDRI. We're gonna select the studio small. That's the one that Evan starts out with, and this is from HDRI Haven, which is just amazing. Leave everything at its default, and then we're gonna start connecting the nodes. So in this case, you're gonna connect the color of the HDRI to the color of the background. The background node is already set up in connecting to the world output surface. So we just gotta come in here and start to connect the uh, texture coordinate and the mapping. So in the texture coordinate, we're gonna take the generated and we're gonna go right into the vector. And then we're gonna go vector of the mapping out to the vector input of the HDRI. Then finally, make sure that you go into the little uh, down arrow next to the render preview and make sure that you've got scene world clicked otherwise you'll be using the default HDRI images there but here if we're using scene world then we'll be using the world settings that we've built here okay now let's get back to seeing how Evan sets up the lights and the rest of the render setup in the right panel make sure it's set to the 3d viewport so we can move the light around and see its position in world space Add a sunlight and rotate and position it. You can turn off the HDRI illumination by going into the property section and then selecting the icon that looks like a globe. That's the world properties. Under surface, set the strength to zero so we just see the sunlight. Move the light so you see that Rembrandt triangle under the eye, real classic example of portrait lighting. In our case, we rotate X to 32 degrees, Y to 33, and Z to 6. In the property section, you can select the light bulb icon and adjust the strength and color of your light. You could also add another sunlight and position it to be more of a fill light, adjusting its strength and color. But we're going to keep it real simple here with just one sunlight. Select the original sunlight and then click the green light bulb icon in the properties area and adjust the angle to soften the shadows. In this case, Evan sets it to somewhere around 30 to 40. 
make sure to turn your HDRI back on by going into the globe icon in the properties area and under the surface section setting the strength higher than zero. In this case he sets it back to 0.6 to see if he likes it. Since this is an explorative process, Evan likes to switch out HDRI maps to see if he gets a better result here and there. So he opens up uh, the shader editor, selects the mapping, environment texture and background node, and then copy and pastes those a little bit lower. He likes to keep both of these because he might wake up the next morning and be like, well, it was better the other way. Then he connects the texture coordinate node and the world output node. In this case, he uh, switches out adds Kaylee interior HDRI from HDRI Haven. Say that three times fast and uh, swaps that out in the environment texture node. The Kaylee map adds some nice fill light, but it doesn't really have a strong backlight. So we'll have to create one to do that. Add an area light. In the properties, click the green light bulb icon and set the shape to rectangle. In the viewport, you can adjust the size to completely cover the back of the model. Then you can adjust the power and the color as you want. So this is looking really good so far, but you also have to create areas of focus and paint with the light. So Evan adds a point light adjusts the placement and the radius, he adjusts the power and the proximity to the model because that's what makes point lights work. And then finally adjusts the color. Now this is already looking beautiful, but it's important to keep playing with light. This is one of the most important phases at this stage. So Evan duplicates the area light on the back and positions it so it's more like a fill light that's pointing up from the ground slightly towards the front. Then he sets the color, the power, and sets its shape to disc. Then he spends a few minutes kind of getting that placement right, making sure that on the uh, left hand side he's zoomed out and zoomed in using the different cameras that he set up to enable this, and really getting that fill light to add just enough life. At the end of the day, this is a war of millimeters, not of miles. It's the subtlety that matters. Now, at around this point, Evan will also create a bit of a particle system to create some interest in the background. But I'm going to skip over that because it's really its own section and there's a lot to unpack inside of there. So next, let's go to scene setup. Select the icon that looks like the back of a camera. You'll note here Evan is uh, using cycles. He also has it set to GPU as opposed to CPU, so you can just choose what works for you. And he's also using the experimental feature set, not just the supported set. All right, then go to Edit Preferences up there at the top in the menu. In the System tab, make sure that you've selected CUDA or Optics, one of those. Okay, close out of that, and then back in the Scene Properties in the Sampling section, Set the render to around 3000 and also take note that he's got his uh, viewport set to around 5000 as well. Then set denoise on for the render and to NLM. In light paths, if you have any transparency, such as the particle system that Evan has, uh, make sure that you've set the um, the number higher than four. Otherwise, it'll just the light just dies after four sets of particles or four sheets. So he's got it set higher to about 32. In subdivision, he's got the dicing rate render set to two pixels, so it's not too heavy. Then switch over to the output properties, which is the icon that looks like a printer. Oddly enough, make sure to set the resolution of your render here. And then also set it to RGBA so you get an alpha and 16 bits so you get the most information. Switch to the passes properties. 
This is the icon that looks like a bunch of images stacked on top of each other. Okay, Evan usually adds a Z depth pass and a material index, and you can see there's a few other chosen here. He also turns off denoise in this area. Now let's set up the depth of field. Make sure you activate render preview and zoom in on the model so we see the face, and that'll be an easier way for us to judge the depth of field. We're gonna try to get just a bit of the ear in depth uh, out of focus while the eyes stay in focus. Then the next thing that we have to do is we have to give the object something to focus on or we have to choose the depth. And in this case, it's just easier to choose an object. So what Evan does is add an empty plane axis object and then position this somewhere between the eyes. Then in the depth of field settings, click in the focus object field and choose that object you just added. Then set your f-stop to something that gives you a bit of a blur. And we're not going to get into, you know, actual aperture and f-stop and all of that. Um, when I shoot video, I always set my, I look for a lens anyways that can get me to 1.4. That's great. The depth of field that you get is fantastic. In this particular case, don't sweat it. Just get yourself a number that works and gives you a little bit of blur in the eyes, or sorry, in the ears but keeps the nose and the eyes in focus. The final thing we can do is to add some post-processing. So make sure you go to the Render Properties tab. Again, this is that um, back of the camera icon. And then scroll down to Color Management. All right, and then within that, we're gonna set a few things uh, the way Evan does. We're gonna set the View Transform to Filmic. We're going to decrease the exposure a little bit increase the gamma and of course your model might change your render might change uh, then we're going to set the look to very high contrast the real meat and potatoes here though is when you go in and you adjust the curves to really dial in that look in this case evan changes the red the green the blue curve separately and that gives you a lot of power all right now the image is largely done at this point, so make sure that your model has all the parts visible and in the left window, turn on render preview so you can get a sense of what this uh, looks like. You can tweak your lighting settings as needed, then position your model, and when you're ready, render your image. All right, how was that? I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe to learn when we are putting out more of these videos to stay up to date with everything that we are doing. Blender, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer related, game and film. Thank you so much for being here and for checking out this video. Make sure to also check us out at vertexschool.com. Take care.